Hello, I know it's back to school for a lot of you, and I hope you're not too excited about that to enjoy the programme. I'm very happy today because my guest is Kate Bush. Welcome, Kate. Hello. And you're going to play for us later on? Yes, yes, I am. You promised? Yes, I am. OK, then. Adam Whitney of Surrey, Kate, wants to know if you were a bit apprehensive doing your, your first song in that very high voice, but then have you always sung like that? No, no, I haven't. Uh, it was really specifically for that song that it was that high because of the subject matter mm. and the fact that uh, I'm playing Kathy and that she was a spirit and it needed some kind of ethereal effect and mm. it seemed to be the best way to do it, to get a high register. Very much an acting job as well, isn't it? Yes, I think so, yeah. Absolutely. Now let's get back to the beginnings. You're, you're 19 now? 20. 20. Yeah, just. And you're from Kent? Yeah. And uh, is Kate Bush your own name? Yes, it is. Now your father's a doctor? Yes. Is it a musical family? Uh, my brothers are very musical, yeah. They were really responsible for turning me onto it in the first place. Mm. They were always playing music when I was a kid. You got a lot of O-levels. You got ten. <laughs> Seems like a world record to me. How did you know that? Oh, I know a lot of things. <laughs> but did you always want a musical career in spite of all those qualifications? Yes, I did. I've, I've always wanted to be involved in music. Mm. I never thought I'd actually be able to sing them, sing my songs, but... Uh, seems that I've done it. I don't think anyone else could, could do them, really. Uh, you left school at 16. What did you do as soon as you left school? Um, well, I, I started training as a dancer uh, because it seemed very complimentary to the music and that I just didn't want to waste my days doing nothing. Mm. You were writing songs then, I mean, yes. from, from way back. How old were you when you started writing songs? Uh, about 11, I think. Yeah. yeah. And mostly late at night, I read, which yes. is these days. Well, it, it always was, really. It seems to be the time of day that things gather, you know? Your mind really works, then? Yeah. I wake up about 11 o'clock, and I'm sort of sleepy all day, and then about <laughs> 11 I really wake up. Now, your first single, Wuthering Heights, um, was a success straight away. Did you do anything excessive with the money it brought you? Well, I, th I think the main thing I've done is try to use it, because um, it's so rarely that you're in a position well, you, you can have money, you know, especially for your work. So what did you do? Well, um, we've bought a studio at my parents' place, so we've actually got a demo studio and we can use it for recording and helping the band and all sorts of things. And it's a really so useful. really good piano. Yeah, a really great one, yeah. It's mm. terrific. Must be nice, that. Um, what was the inspiration for, for Wuthering Heights? Simply the story? Well, I hadn't read... The book, that wasn't what it inspired it. Um, it was a television series they had years ago, and I just managed to catch the very last few minutes where there was hand coming through the window and blood everywhere and glass. And I just didn't know what was going on, and someone explained the story. Mm. It was just hanging around for years, so I read the book in order to get the research right and, and wrote the song. And that had just stuck in your mind all those, all those years? Yeah, it, it was, seemed so strong. Yes. Well, it's a, a haunting song, certainly. Now, Lane Ross of Epsom and Donna Lyle of Fife want to know, and I think you've answered this, how old you were when you first started singing. It was, what, 11, wasn't it? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. yeah. That was, I've been singing since I was a kid, really. Mm. But Deborah Louth of Leighton Buzzard asks, now, do you find it easier to write songs now than when you were younger? Is the process becoming easier? No, it's not easier. I find it, it's much more difficult, actually, because I'm much more critical of what I do. I mean, I used to just write loads of rubbish. I dare say lots of people think I still do, but it's, uh, I don't know, it's a much more complicated process now, but I'm much more satisfied with the songs than I used to be, mm. and I think that's good. Kate Walshaw of Canterbury wants to know, do you get very nervous before you perform your songs? Yes, I do, um, especially when it's live. Um, there's so much you have to think about, really, and you can't help but be aware of yourself. You just find you're out there looking at yourself. Mm. It's a very strange feeling. Do you ever put on a kind of disguise to get over that? Oh, yes. I mean, I, I use all kind of props, I think, like any actor, you know, like the makeup and the clothes, and especially the piano. That's a really big prop. Hide behind them. Yeah, right. Mm. Well, Alan Foster of Swallow's Nest and Edward Pegg of Portsmouth and Vivian Boulderson of Pontypridd want to know, as many people do, when your second album is coming out. Well, it should be out late this autumn, hopefully October. And this song will be on it? Yes, it will, yes. And Sophie Bell, there's a nice name. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Sophie Bell of Gloucestershire wants to know who's responsible for choosing the tracks that are released as singles? Well, uh, I certainly have my idea of the singles that I want to release and I put them forward. Um, but they have to be agreed by the company because obviously the company's aim is to sell records and unless they think that 
the single is capable, they're not going to release it. Mm. But so far we've agreed and it's been great. It's no quarrels well. yet? No, not yet. Well, back to Kate. David Werner of David asks if you have any plans or hopes to branch out into films or, or theatre. Ooh. Um, yes, I have hopes. No plans, though. I think that's very much something that will come along and I'll know when it is, you know. I, I don't think it's in the near future. Really? No, I don't think so. Mm. I've got too much to do in music. I've only just begun. Mm. Long way to go. Well, we'll see. John Edmund of Tavistock wants to know, um, what, what will your backing band consist of when you go on tour? Well, we're not actually sure as yet because we're going to need uh, quite a few extra musicians because of the production on the album. People are going to expect to hear the same quality when they come to see us live. Mm. But uh, we'll obviously have drums, probably two guitarists, uh, bass, uh, hopefully some kind of uh, string quartet, if not a synthesizer player, mm. a keyboard player. And your brothers, will, will they be with you? Yes, I hope so, yes. Mm. Keep it in the family. Yeah. OK, to all that specialised movement uh, prompts a question from Graham Randerson of Leeds, who wants to know if you've been influenced by mime artists like Marcel Marceau or Lindsay Kemp. Well, I've definitely been influenced by Lindsay Kemp because uh, he's one of my heroes and he was my teacher for a while. Marcel Marceau. Um, I admire his stuff, but it, it's a little too staid for me. You know, it's it's the art of illusion. Mm -hmm. It's not really uh, the actual showing of emotion, which is really what Lindsay teaches. And for me, that's perfect because it's what music in any form of art is about. It's emotion. It's from inside. Yes. Well, here's another one from Cameron Underwood of Sheffield. And he asks a question that lots of people have asked about a fan club. All oh, right. Well, hello, Cameron. I remember you because he, he, in fact, wrote to me the other day. Really? And your letters in the post. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're forming a fan club very soon, and I'd like to apologise to all the people who've written to me, and I just haven't managed to get round to replying to you, but it's uh, on the way, and we'll inform you as soon as we've got something done. Well, that's the thing. If you're successful, you have little time for... Other yeah, but things. they write such wonderful letters. I mean, it's incredible. It's really lovely. One lovely. last question from Jane Fear of Dungannon about your hair. What do you do to it? She loves it. <laughs> we'll just pull it out. And, uh, well, I put henna on it because it's a very good conditioner and it's like a mud and you just sort of <laughs> slip it on and over. And uh, I plait it and it makes it frizzy. And that's that? That's that. Okay, there you are, Jane. It's up to you now. <laughs>